sales. How Meek Mill clowned himself out of his career. Let's get into it. And number one records in his catalog, it's fair to say that Meek Mill was once considered one of the biggest artists in the game. Now, rappers losing their spotlight isn't anything unusual. We have seen countless artists rise and fall for many different reasons. Hold on, I'm just gonna say this before this whole thing starts. Boy, Meek, you freaky, Meek! You freaky! Freaky frog. But what makes Meek's journey you know what from the you top did? of the music industry to a lower level of fame so intriguing is not that he lost his ability to produce quality music, but instead it was simply the, the fact that he became an internet laughing. He was getting and people haven't let up on screen or mocking every single thing he does. How did this happen? Especially for a rapper like Meek Mill, whose career began as a respected street artist and was raised in one of the grittiest neighborhoods of Philadelphia. My name is Louis. Some nice and he could turn calling or some shit. Meek Mill to getting clowned out of his career. Capable of spitting bars, which depicted him in those rough areas of the city of brotherly love, Meek's early work felt raw, rugged, and essential at a time when not many street artists were popping Meek off. Meek was really, Meek was really hitting for real. Can even turn cold. Yeah! Yeah! And even to this day, people still <sighs> miss to the time. Meek, you had so much potential, buddy. Or even his debut studio album. You decided to be Freaky. Nightmares, which was home to one of the greatest intros of all time. Like this, this I'm like this in a matter of grind like this. Time I speak, I'm like the See, go on, me. You tripping. So much so that it's come on, me. It went so wrong from there. But if we're to look back at when things began to get out of his grasp, it arguably started with a rapper who's about as far removed from the streets of Philly as possible. If we were to pinpoint the moment where Meek went from a formidable MC to a figure of ridicule, it's fair that beefing with Drake is when things went. This nigga beef with Drake. That. Drake, and everyone, including myself, has Drake. Come Meek and Drake had a collaborative relationship until a track by the name of Rico, which dropped on Meek Mill's 2015 album Dreams Worth More Than Money. After Meek took exception to a line about the girl of your dreams, which he interpreted to be about his then girlfriend Nicki Minaj, a beef ensued when Meek decided to out Drizzy for having a ghostwriter. But ghostwriter or not, he was about to get smoked when it came time for diss tracks to drop. On back to back and charged up, Meek pretty much got bodied in front of the whole world to see. See me come and go back to back. Oh, this Drake nigga Drake was cooking. His song Summer 16. That one night when they were both in the Four Seasons, Meek and Nicki had the room below his suite. To capitalize on this, he played back to back over and over again, with Meek doing nothing about it. Considering Meek was known as the hard edged rapper from Philly, this wasn't a good look. Bro, but what didn't help Meek, is that there was a domino of Meek was getting hit by Diddy, and that's why Nicki wasn't. You know what I'm saying? That's why Nikki broke up with him, bro. To getting clowned by Drizzy. Sad that world. Even his then MMG label mate, Wale, got involved in. I, I honestly think, you know, he brought like a pencil to a gunfight. Mm -hmm. He didn't bring a knife, a like, pencil. You know what I'm saying? You piece of paper. Try a paper cut on your back. Like, you can't compete with somebody <laughs> that bro. got some type of relationship. In response, Meek didn't aim at Wale meaningfully. Instead, he went to Twitter, a place that would soon become a routine source of mockery for him. He gotta stop to going on that Twitter, that bro. Feelings hurt. While I just ain't gonna tweet a thing about my album, he's been hating on me for a long time now. Don't even text me, cornball. Alongside coming across as overly sensitive, the fallout from the Drake beef continued to have a ripple effect on his career. Because every time he tried to stick his neck out and reassert himself, he just got destroyed publicly time and time again. When he decided to fixate on Drake's alleged ghostwriter, Quentin Miller, and even ordered his goons to put the beats on him at got one point, it just seemed like a complete after... overkill to most Damn, people. nigga! Go oh, beat up Drake, nigga! Just go over this nigga goddamn ghostwriter and shit. Ghostwriter cookie your ass, nigga. Where he referred to Button as a crackhead. In typical fashion, Joe clapped back with a simple but effective put down. I think you've taken things out of context. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I think you've taken some things out of context. I didn't diss you, number... Wait, Meek Mill, number one. I think you've taken out of context. I didn't diss you. Number two, you don't rap well enough to give this rap with me. A simple but effective put down. And basically won the beef. You let Joe Biden beat, beat you in a damn beef, nigga. Come on, you supposed to be top five, man. You top trash. When 50 Cent waded into the whole scenario, he seemed to bypass Meek's talents and go straight at his intelligence. When 50 Cent was asked about how Meek was dealing with his beef with Drake, he mentioned that Meek Mill made a questionable move by starting trouble with AR Ab. 
AR Ab is not just a rapper from Philadelphia like Meek Mill, but he's also known for being involved in some serious criminal activities that has him locked up in Here prison for the foreseeable 45 years. future. God so damn! AR Ab in back to back, and Meek Mill's decision to target him was seen by 50 Cent as a bad move, suggesting it wasn't smart to stir up issues with someone so notorious. It turned into the, the kid being on stage saying fuck AR Ab. And I know we that all that thought Meek was that yeah. nigga, bro. It, it almost broke everybody's hearts when we, we heard him. Now you just took Almost broke hearts. Completely was non-threatening with, with Drake and and this one, mm. and turned it into something that could potentially turn into you bumping in, in Philly. Mm, true. You know he's really not that bright. <laughs> <laughs> that kid is not that bright. Look, the easiest thing you can do is bring other people into the statements that you're saying, right? While you write music. Over time, Meek would backpedal to the point that he would even collaborate with Drake again, making this the first of several mishaps that he would make when it came to public relations over the years. However, while Drake and Meek eventually- Wait, this nigga got dissed by this nigga and then went and collab with him, bro? Oh my. Bro, where is Diddy to come save you at least, bro? Like, I'm not gonna lie, this nigga hold your ass, bro. He put dick to ass. Dick to ass, and then you did he didn't even help you out, brother. That shit tragic. Actually, managed to patch things up. The same really can't be said for him and academics. This long running feud started when I Mark first became aware of Axe's content and his existence. Academics never reported kindly when it came to Meek, often calling his albums a flop and that he was steadily becoming irrelevant. You spent all that money and still didn't hit over a hundred. This is sad. It's important to mention that Ak is a diehard fan of Drake, and the fact that Drake and Meek had a feud in the past Drake! his hatred towards him. But once he realized academics had been covering his music on his account, he declared it a mumble rap promotion page. Ak isn't exactly loved by everyone, but even those who strongly dislike him realized that Meek was going overboard. Meek playing with himself with this shit. If it's really a mumble rap promo page, then why bother caring about it? Meek mostly just comes off as salty here. Bro, this nigga in his damn feelings, bro. I'd be damned if I let a nigga know how I feel, bro. I learned that the hard way, bitch. Don't ever let them know how you feel, bitch. It don't matter how bad it gets. Fuck them bitches, Such is the time when he tweeted this in June of 2020, saying, Academics is canceled because he's a bad police and our culture doesn't need them. He also gassed a lot of beefs that got people killed and hurt and never donated a dollar to the culture. We gonna holla at you. Wait, who are you to decide if this nigga's canceled, Meek? You act like you speaking for the people, bro. I know you made dreams and nightmares, shit. But that don't mean you goddamn got the key to the streets and shit. Your next run, champ. While some agreed with Meek, others found it amusing that he believed he was in a position to target Axe. That's what I'm saying! People letting a blogger get them this mad. You know you can't cancel nobody, weak mills. That's what I'm saying, you're going at a blogger. You're supposed to be a level above that, bro. Only reinforcing the idea that he is no longer a figure to be feared or respected. And That's when he essentially uh... suggested that he was going to place a bounty on Axe's head, the blogger didn't hesitate to remind him that the whole thing was ridiculous coming from a platinum selling artist. Stop snitching on yourself. Stop telling the world you're green lighting people and just do what you have to do. Because right now, like, when you say green lighting, I send that to the police. I'm gonna be honest with you. Oh, yo, are you green lit? Wait, Meek Mill just told me in front of the world I'm green lit? Okay, here's a cop. Hey. Meek Mill, that's his account, that's his people. He say I'm green. Nigga fucking Meek. From that initial fucking interaction onwards, the Meek diddler got to his ass, bro. Who would be ready to pounce whenever he slipped up. As a result, whether Meek is weirdly eating fries from his legs by the pool, hanging from bamboo sticks, or allegedly paying for posts from blogs to try and boost his lackluster sales, Ak has always been there to catalog his many, many errors. Including when he went for one of the most controversial figures. WD1 hate by Ak. I can't lie. Like, one thing about Ak, he always gonna be D1 in that shit than hip-hop and what should have been a home run only to lose out again a longtime friend of academics former king troll of hip-hop and verified snitch takashi 69's journey has they were a severe downturn in recent years and yet the man who had ratted on everyone in the nine tray bloods somehow still got one over on me when they were beefing nigga you lost a damn me bro nigga Meek, you lost the six nine fourth exchanges the situation escalated when they encountered each other in atlanta this led to a heated argument happening entirely behind their security teams one thing i say about meek bro you don't gotta be hard you don't even gotta be like for the streets or anything you know what i'm saying it's okay to be a normal ass human being but if you are normal 
and you're definitely not normal because you know what I'm saying you were diddly in the diddler and shit. But if you're gonna if you're gonna pretend to be that role, bro, like or just claim that role that you're that nigga, bro, you can't you can't move like this, bro. You can't you can't you can't move like this. You can't have I'm not even saying you can't have security and shit, but you can't just be moving so hoish. Like you moving like a female, bitch. Like you moving like like a bitch. <laughs> Like, that's just kind of crazy to me. Like, nigga, how are you going to act hard and just pretend to be hard? Talk about you greenlighting people and shit. Nigga, you, you got damn Diddy calling your daddy eating fries. That's your shit, bitch. Like, and I understand niggas can have fun and shit, but you over here doing the goddamn zestiest, most freakalicious shit in the goddamn world, shit. And then you let 6 9 press you, bro. Like, come on, bitch. I don't even look at 6 9 bro. I don't even, I don't even, oh, uh, I don't even get in that situation, bitch. It didn't look good for either of them, but for Meek, who was seen as a real gangster, That's it especially hurt his image, which was already taking a lot of hits. For many people who supported him before, this moment seemed like a turning point. Meek became an L after this shit. I'm sorry, I can't fuck with Meek after this. For others, it was a sign that Meek had some growing they up. They thought about Meek, uh, six nine ball all his cards. People in positions that they're not ready to be in. I feel like a lot of the shit that Meek has going on, he was kind of pushed into it. Any wrong move, and you could become the villain. Right. Uh, Meek should have ran from that situation, Yo, and the internet would have killed him and said, "Look at Meek running." Jeez. Like no matter what, Meek was gonna lose in that situation. This brings us to a critical aspect of Meek's career. Don't For punch, years, bro. He gets to fuck be it. In somewhat of an identity crisis where he can't decide whether or not he wants to be a street rapper or a motivational figure. This uncertainty in his choices often makes it easier for fans to criticize him. He's Obviously, talking about promoting peace days, and then no talking about green light and act the next second, bro. But following his incarceration in 2017 from a parole violation, the man that re-emerged seemed to be different. After being released from jail, Meek became a campaigner for change, teaming up with Michael Rubin, who also wouldn't make things any easier for Meek in the... Y'all know about them all-white parties. Y'all know about him? Y'all, look at him. Do y'all see in, in his eyes? In, in his eyes, do y'all see any soul? I'm not going to get too deep into it, you know what I'm saying? But do y'all see a soul? long run, as you'll see later, Meek launched the Reform Alliance, an organization which fought to change how the prison system and sentencing operated. This was a far cry from street beef, and it looked like Meek had really turned the corner. Overwhelm, I come from being in prison just seven days ago, what I call history, because I know it's a lot of voiceless men and people I personally know from being in prison, sitting next to them every day, who are dependent on me, and I feel like God has given me a, a great platform to help many others and make Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and the world a better place. See, and that was all However, okay. Just months that after was all okay. Focus and brand direction, he was back to speaking recklessly. One example of this is when he got himself banned from the area by a local artist named Poundside Pop. Rather than continuing to preach the virtues of peace or rising above it, Meek tweeted, we run the hood. The fuck is you saying, LOL. At a time where he should have been moved on from worrying about running Philly to running his own business, the proper response to that would be, you can have it. You can have it. You can have it. The the I guess the the way the route you were trying to take, bro, and to save all your face, you get banned from an area, bro. Actually, don't even respond, bro. If it's a little ass it's random, I think I will. Some damn run side pop, nigga, bro. I don't. Have, like nobody out of Philly heard this, nigga, bro. You can still talk tough whenever the opportunity arrived. And at the age of 36, Can't be it's not necessarily a good look. The niggas ain't fucking with me, man. Mm -hmm. I be hearing a lot of people talking and shit like mm -hmm. that. Just it's talk. really like that. Like, if I go out in my hood, it's really like that. We really are not. I don't want to entertain of, we said we got 500 murders a year. That means it's a lot of killers in our neighborhood. When I come out in Philadelphia, I'm like... I've already said all I needed to say. It's not nothing to promote. And if I come out, we bring real street niggas together from city to city. Yet, as Wayno noted on Everyday Struggle, this wasn't a lesson Mill seemed willing to learn. And it meant that his own Dream Chasers label couldn't take off as it should. I wish that Meek would see that he's like, I wouldn't say above things, but certain things he just got to stay out of. You know what I mean? Literally, like, as bro. Artist, as a person in the game. You're like, already you to the point, like, alone, nigga, you don't even involve yeah, yourself. It's a lot of bullshit that comes with it, but the streets is a mentality. I felt like I understood Meek's intent. But realistically, yo, I think that this nigga need a damn PR team. Because a lot of artists don't want to sign with me. And I don't know what for what reason, but I don't, you know, 
we haven't seen Meek as the artist that breaks artists. I think he needs to just create some detachment between him and the street. Rather than just being a statement without evidence, Bueno's words would come true when it was revealed Roddy Rich happily discarded his ties to Meek once he got big. To preface this, it's important to note that Roddy Rich was once speculated to be on Meek Mill's Dream Chaser label, to the point that he was even spotted wearing a DC chain. Roddy Rich had a vague affiliation to Meek back in his early days. However, as time passed on, Roddy's connection to Meek began to fade. And he has since stated that if he were to sign with any artist's label, it would have been Nipsey Hussle's, as he felt Nipsey did more for him than Meek ever did. Still, Meek continued to assert that Roddy was taken from him by Atlantic Records. And Still, me continue to assert that Rod Roddy, my youngin, still, but the labels uh, separated us instantly when the millions came in from him. Same thing they tried to do with me and Rose. It takes a long time to catch up to because most of them tied in for the love of money. Artists scared to speak up. Nigga, you got Diddy backing you, bro. Roddy was Literally. From him by Atlantic Records. Diddy is backing you, bro. Like one of his infamous Twitter rants. In response, Roddy, who is 11 years younger than Meek, explained that this wasn't the right way to go about business. My only situation with him, he know this, so I can say whatever I want to say. One thing you're not going to ever hear me do, I'm a real nigga. I don't speak on shit with niggas. I explain this to him. Please, let's not speak on our business and situations. Can't even call each other on the phone. Essentially cut out of the Roddy Rich story, this isn't even the only time that his label basically threw Meek to the side. Even when he was deep into his career and should have been seen as a fully fledged star when he released 2021's Expensive Pain, they still treated him like any other artist they had just signed. So why would they do this? This nigga. Well, due to how Meek is treated these days and how much the fan base's perception of him has changed over the years, they can do so with no consequences. Besides, his sales figures have kept declining to the point that even when he and Rick Ross dropped a long-awaited collaborative album in 2023, 31K? he got number 23 on the charts and barely sold 31,000 units. Robbed of that kind of hunger his fan base used to have for new music, Meek is still trying to keep the buzz alive. But unfortunately... Nobody ever says throw on that damn new Meek, bruh. Hey, put on that new Meek, bitch. And I'm not gonna lie, after everything that's happened, bitch, just take your millions and enjoy your life, bitch, because it's over. It also plays into how he's treated like a punchline by so much of the hip-hop audience. But rather than sticking to his guns and doing what he wants to do, Meek cares far too much what people think. This was especially clear in June of 2023, when Meek took to Twitter to basically ask if he fell off. Who thinks I fell off or don't really think I got it with rapping anymore? I for real need answers and tell the truth because I'm not taking it personal. I need to hear how people think before I do what I do. A social experiment. With fans ultimately agreeing that his music doesn't hit as it used to in recent years, this intense search for validation left both fans and hip-hop commentators, such as Charlemagne the God, to clown him. But why are you asking niggas this, bro? You sound like a bitch, Meek! Guys, let me know for real. Did I fall off? Bro, you sound like... Like, you grasping for straws, bitch. Like, that's not... Gangster, bitch. That's not that's not a real nigga like. And it's okay if you're not a you know what I'm saying if you're not that, but don't claim it. Him even more. Well, why do you care what people on social media think? Why do people need? That's what I'm saying. The wrong person to ask on social media, bro. You can't get on social media and ask a question. Nah, because nobody's there to give you serious. Literally, answers. bro. That Cut is it, it out. I would say probably 80 percent is gonna be BS, and they're just gonna be attacking you because they can't. And when you consider how brutally Kanye West disrespected Meek, it's obvious that the big dogs in the game also don't see him in the same light. Well, who did, how did he disrespect them? To make himself a target for clowning. For example, look how Kanye reacted when Meek tried to call him out for wearing a White Lives Matter t-shirt amidst the george floyd riots and i put white lives matter on a t-shirt oh you know what let's go get celebrities let's go get puff daddy let's get dave Chappelle. let's go get meek mills what made somebody think meek mills could say something to me Lace's what journey to Yo, this is the funniest thing I've ever this nigga bro <laughs> i'd be devastated a nigga talking about me Yo, like man, this bro i'm crying laughing man somebody saw meek mills <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm literally in tears. <laughs> Although he didn't respond to these claims, it didn't make any impact. He can't respond to Kanye, bro. You already took too many L's. As in two different leagues. Not only creatively, but financially. As Ye has no shortage of slip-ups on his record, the one thing you can't say is that he isn't true to himself. Meanwhile, the past few years have resulted in Meek being viewed as a toy for billionaires who like to boost their credibility by... No, literally a toy. Job, as was the case for Michael. The diddler. Rubin. As I mentioned earlier, Meek has been linked up with Michael Rubin for a long time. 
Since then, he's added Robert Kraft to his list of exceptionally wealthy friends. But that doesn't explain the way that he gets treated by these guys. Considering that Michael Rubin should really be treating him like an equal partner in their organization, Meek, the former gangster from Philly, has allowed himself to be mocked by these people too. Posting pictures of the toilet bowl after the Rubin white party like a sorority girl on wine coolers, to the many, many pictures of them embracing very tightly, the relationship with Ruben might have done wonders for his advocacy, but not for his reputation. You're gonna get another drunken hug tonight. I don't care what anyone says. You're getting a drunken hug. You too. You too. Drunken hugs are coming tonight. Hey yo, freaky ass billionaires. Are they sharing a blanket? To make things worse, it doesn't seem like the address book is being put to work either. With Baby also getting his reputation- I'm not gonna lie, bro. I gotta know, Baby. What the fuck? We're talking about Meek Mill. I seen this shit, Baby. I would never catch young boy doing this shit right here, bro. Why does this make me want to throw up? Why am I feeling I got destroyed by staying around? Feel sick. It was pursued they were to acquire game. But by the looks of it, this isn't the case whatsoever, as Meek still can't bring his projects to life. Meek said this on threads. He said, yo, where's that person in Silicon Valley that will work with people like myself? with influence and build this social media music based app where you go to hear new music watch exclusive interviews and content where if you sign up you may get new content from your favorite artists and sports players i think i would do sports and entertainment meek science bro this nigga act <laughs> if you're hanging around 15 billionaires and you still tweeting like this trying to find that nigga what the fuck? Are That's what is, I've been saying this whole time. Why is Diddy been helping him? But then you know why Diddy don't help him, bro? Diddy don't need to help him. He, he got him as a toy and That's it. What are they doing for you? He hugs. I, I think Meek may have meant to send this in the group chat. I'll be like, yo, Meek, why are you asking the general internet this? You know, Meek should be going to Mike Rubin and saying, listen, no more Meek, you are an embarrassment to, to, to the weirdos. Mind. How are you an embarrassment to the weirdos, bro? I, I have this idea for an app. Y'all are using me for my social equity and my cultural coolness. Yo, let's let's do business. Between all of the mistreatment he's received both in This nigga literally became the fucking black friend that billionaires say they have, bro. That's who you are, Meek. I'm not racist. I'm friends with Meek Mill. How am I racist? I'm friends with Meek Mill. You can't call me racist. I hang with Meek Mill. <sighs> and within the most exclusive sectors of society, it it's now created a scenario where no matter what he does now, it's always tainted by his public persona away from the mic. As a result of this, it doesn't matter what he does, the go-to response is to mock him. For instance, Meek wasn't even given any leeway when his team made it to the Super Bowl. Although Dreams and Nightmares was a bit of an unofficial anthem for the Eagles, his decision to celebrate them making it to the big game with a freestyle over hit him up just led to even more trolling. Bro could have just congratulated the team and moved on, always doing the most. I refuse to believe Meek Mill is a real person. Aside from that, one of the biggest factors that continues to damage Meek's credibility is that things just aren't well thought out. This nigga can't even do a damn freestyle no this more, bro. Ask how African people hear his My nigga can't even do a freestyle no more without you getting mocked on the internet. That's how you know you need to get off that. Hub. That's how you know it's 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 cooked chicken, buddy. Music. Or announce Hold on. Baby texted me. Baby texted. Hold on, guys. Got to check. I keep saying baby texting me. I, oh. My heart just dropped, guys. We're going to we're going to push past Even and finish the video. Spent months dissing him for going to jail and not expect to get any backlash because he doesn't calculate his moves at all. I'm calling Likewise, this girl baby. She's not even my baby. Like when but he I recently revealed that he charges 250k for a feature, all people did was wonder how this was possible in 2024. We can name a thousand better ways to spend 250k other than a Meek Mill verse. Seen as the butt of every joke, it's reached the point where he can't even kick an abuser off his label without getting blasted for it. Once footage surfaced of Dream Chasers' artist, Vori, literally threatening to kill his girlfriend, Meek Mill took swift and decisive action to remove...
Move him from the label ranks. As, let's face it, the last thing Meek needs is even more bad publicity or reason to be torn down by the general public. But Nigga, y'all whole goddamn career is fucking on built camera, on sand. People were still not willing to take Meek's side oh, God, or stand yeah, with uh. him in the action he took. Dude always preaching about some bullshit. Bro, we don't even care if you're from Philly. Vori is better than Meek. This ain't 2012. No longer seen as a top tier artist, nor a. Think threatening to kill your girl. You drop him, and they're on his side. Handling of his public image and the scrapes he's gotten himself into have really done considerable damage to his career. To make matters worse, it was recently revealed that Meek was one of the redacted names listed in a new sexual lawsuit against Sean Diddy Combs, leading many to believe the rapper is gay. This has sparked numerous. It's not, you know. We already know. As Meek's response to the drama, we already know. Say anything but admit it was false. However, Meek tried to be smart in this situation and put out a five song album in an attempt to capitalize off the publicity. Sadly, it would backfire. And as stated in this post by his enemy, Academics, the results weren't looking too well. Meek, my final message to you, buddy. I know your name, probably gonna see it. Actually, no, you be on the internet so much, you might fucking see it. Get off the damn internet, nigga. Leave. You don't wanna be here, I promise. It's not for you. Everything you're trying to do, bro, you got, you made your meals. You made your meek meal. So get the fuck out, bitch. Your time has come, bitch.